Hello, welcome back to the Omniverse Comics Guide podcast, which is also available on YouTube. Uh, I'm Dave Molyneux, and I have the enormous pleasure of introducing our guest for this month's Collector's Item Special episode. He's the host of Running Out of Space podcast, which itself focuses on collecting. Uh, guests have included connoisseurs of Japanese and Asian toys, Air Jordans, action figures, Pyrex, and even some guy from England who collects comics. Um, joining us in the Omniverse today, it's Adam Grabarnik. Hey, Dave. I meant to check with you if I was uh, pronouncing your name right. You totally did. Did I get it? As, as you were doing your, yep, yeah, good job. As you were doing your intro, I'm like, is he going to say my last name right? <laughs> it's all good, though. Yeah. It's the cosmic, it's the cosmic balance, man. Like, like I have one of the most unpronounceable names. It seems <laughs> no one gets it right anywhere. So no, you're probably used to it by now, right? I'm all your teachers just butchering it all those years. Yeah, and it's nice. You get variety, you know, and yes. <laughs> it can be anyone you want, <laughs> apart from who you are. The yeah. irony. So, how you doing? You good? Yeah, everything's going great. Um, the rain stopped out in Los Angeles. Everything's going real well. Does the rain yeah. last long in Los Angeles? No, but we got like a pretty bad uh, downpour the last few weeks. Oh. On and off. God, you never but see it nice really rain in films up. unless someone breaks up with somebody. In LA? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's always... usually fake. Yeah, of course it would be. <laughs> usually fake rain, yeah. It's always John Cusack. He always breaks up in yeah, the rain. <laughs> he looks so good with wet hair, though. He does. Oh, John. I haven't seen him in a while. Not, you know, as a mate. I just mean, like, in films. Didn't he just get, an, like, nominated for an award or something a few years ago? I forget Did what he? it was. Last thing I saw him in was that Beach Boys movie. But I feel like he was just, like, doing an award circuit for something on TV. I forget what it was. I don't remember. But he's great. Yeah, I, I haven't seen him in a while either. Of course, he um, he played a collector, um, quite famously, uh, High Fidelity. Yes, a record collector. That's record right. collector, Good yeah. Movie. Yeah, it was a fun film. <laughs> well, I can bring it to comics right now because the last time we spoke, you recommended uh, Peter David's X Factor. I did. I did. And I have been digging into that. And I'm going to tell you, Larry Stroman is my new favorite 90s artist. So so you got the volume one of the 90s run did I lose first. You? Can I? Can you hear me? Say yeah, I can hear you. Oh, sorry. Did um, So volume one, they they ended up numbering really weirdly. So there's a volume one of the 90s run, and then volume two is the 2000s up. I read the 90s run. Ah, okay. There's some really nice stuff in there. The whole run, you finished? No, oh. I'm digging through it. I'm not, I'm not going to say too much then. I've read enough of it to really, really, really become enamored with Larry Stroman. He's got a really interesting style, like a really interesting Un style. That's right up my, his stuff is right up my alley. It's like Art Nouveau, Art Deco, like yeah. so so fresh, and it, it has aged so nicely. I mean, I was wrapped up in like the Image guys during that time. Yeah, and this totally just like I was just not into it. It, it just wasn't it wasn't the my thing. It wasn't my aesthetic yet. Yeah, but coming into it now, it has aged so nicely. I'm trying to think if he did an Image series at some point. I wasn't sure if he, if he jumped over for a little. I don't know, but I, I'm going to find out because what what a dynamo. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not a huge Peter David guy, but the writing in that X Factor run so far, it's very cinematic. And around that time, um, the you know, Marvel wasn't really known for its writing. It was mostly, you know, that was the time of like art taking the center stage. So yeah. To see Peter David around, and even if you read some of the stuff from that era, it's it's very verbose. There's a lot of like thought bubbles that just go on yeah. and on, and they just kind of repeat beats over and over again. And then you have like this X Factor run with Peter David, and I don't know if this is his whole thing. I've read some of his Hulk stuff, but in X Factor in general, it's very cinematic. It reads like a it reads like a movie. It reads like a screenplay, which is I appreciated very much. Yeah, it's I'm really glad you tried it out. I mean, I'm desperate for you to get onto to book two because that's where yeah. it, it's really really rewarding in terms of the, if you like the character work volume two which is it should have been x factor investigations volume one but they've ended up making it x factor volume two um okay. and it's it's madrox and strong guy i'm trying to think now if larry stroman does a couple of issues in that run too i'll have to i'll have to check back 
Um, but again, you kind of get what you would con- not con- necessarily consider your your like superstar artists. Yes. But the tone is is perfect. It's perfect. Um, Who knew? Completely different tone to the book you've got. Cool. But it's like a PI series instead. Oh, cool. Yeah. So See, it's well, very that's different the thing. I was not a big X-Men guy. My brother was a big X-Men reader. I was more into Spider-Man, Silver Surfer sort of stuff, like the cosmic stuff, but also a big Spidey guy. Um, I, I've never really delved deep. I mean, I've read Dark Phoenix and stuff, but I've never really dug deep into the X-Men titles from that era. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. Like Chris Claremont is a genius, but like he can kind of get verbose and just very wordy and like. Yeah. The, the, the he, he doesn't have much of a, an economy when it comes to his scripts. <laughs> no. But but I, I understand. I mean, I, I I bow down to him. I mean, he you know he laid the foundation and he's a legend and everything. It's just it's it's it was not my thing back then. And I think maybe now I'm at the age where I can appreciate it more. So I've kind of slowly but surely been dipping into that era of X-Men. Yeah, he is. He does like to fill the page, which is interesting for a, oh, yeah. a comic. <laughs> it's got to be some space for some art in there, Chris, mate. You've got to chill it. Chill it yes. a little bit. <laughs> so we've, I've given you some topics to, to talk about in terms of like looking at your collection, because you you space which is um it focuses on other people's collections um you've had all sorts of guests in there as i mentioned earlier um but occasionally like you'll talk about your own experiences and how they relate but you don't generally get to share an awful lot of your actual collection so today we don't no (laughs) well we're going to give you that opportunity today so (laughs) we're going to look at five items possibly um but we're going to start off, and I don't know if you were including X Factor in this, but we're going to start off with a current read. No, I'm not. I'm actually not going to do that. So uh, a current read, my my current read that I am loving is uh, the new Punisher book. Oh, have you been reading this at all? No, but it's the one I think between that and Daredevil, they're the two Marvel titles I'm tempted by at the moment. Okay, so uh, Jason Aaron is, is writing Jason this Aaron. Punisher, right? It's a mini series. It's only thirteen issues. It's on number. Um, it's number nine. Just came out. Right. And I have not given a crap about Punisher in decades. No. But Jason Aaron's writing is so good. I, I I am such a fan of his. And he what he's done with Frank and his story. He's totally reinvigorated the character. He has um, broken so many um, shackles off of the character that ah. has kind of kept 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 the punisher in kind of just this endless kind of cycle um he's broken out of that and he has um reinvigorated the character and just like really made it potent and really really dark um and it's almost like a grindhouse movie is it mature readers i beg your pardon is it a mature readers book or is it Uh, it, yeah parental advisory oh yeah there's blood oh yeah there's a lot of blood in this Ah. and it's dark yeah, and he's retconned his his origin a bit, and the art is just so good on Who's the inside. Who's the artist? Saiz. So I haven't heard. Oh, it, I haven't heard. Of, I is haven't it heard Jesus Saiz? It might be. It might be. But honestly, like I'll read anything Jason Aaron puts out. Like, look at these covers. Is that the cover? And like this looks like an ad. Wow. Oh, oh I remember seeing God. that one. I remember seeing yes. that one. And the interiors are fantastic. Okay, I'm sold because like this yeah. is the series I wanted to try out because I, I, I have a soft spot for the Punisher and I don't really know why. Me too. Um, Me too. But and it's I just got to be handled since, um, right. Say what? He's got to be handled right. You know. Yes, I have not read it since Millar was doing it with Quietly. I hope that's how you pronounce his last name. That was years ago. I have not cared about Punisher for years, to and put- on a whim, just because I'm a big Jason Aaron fan. Yeah. Um, I saw that he was doing a Punisher book, and I said, I- I'm, "I'm on board, no matter what. I'm going to do it." I'm even reading his other one, his Boom comic. But I'm, um, you know, oh. these days, like, say what? That was at the uh, end of the world one. I can't remember the name of it. Yes, yes, yeah. Now, with some of these um, creator-owned titles, what I like to do is I like to just get them and build it up so that I can just kind of tear through them all in one shot. Uh huh. I-, I just did that with Al Ewing's. Um, boom book uh we only find them when they're dead yeah and it was very rewarding just to read the whole thing through doing it month to month it's hard because 
you know, some of these creators, they're, they're, they have so much intention with their books and they're, they're so in their own head about them that mm -hmm. the issues, I forget, there's so much detail and so many nuances that it wasn't being effective to me reading one a month. Yeah. So I, what I like to do is, and I do this with Tom King too, I'll like build it up and then just tear through them like I binge it like I would something on Netflix, you know? So you're not tempted just to hang on for the trades and then get, get the trade paperback collection? You prefer no. singles? I prefer floppies these days. Some I, I do the Marvel app, um, but some stuff I'll do the trade. Like, uh, But no, generally no, these days. But I also have to really... No, no, no. I, I will do the trade. If I if it's a writer that I know and it's a creative team that I like, I'll, I'll take the leap. Um, or else I'll just wait for the trade. Yeah, like I'm, I'm gonna, I've been waiting for like the Supergirl trade. I just bought those on digitally. But yeah, I'll do trades. I won't do trades as, um, like my, the main focus of my collecting isn't, isn't trades. I'll buy nice, like absolute editions. Like I bought the, the, uh, Alan Moore Swamp thing recently. Like I'll oh, buy that type of stuff. I was that close to getting the Len Wein and Wright's yes. Swamp thing. Yeah. Uh, cause like the very production pretty. on those is, oh. It's too yeah. good. Yeah. And Marvel is catching up on that. Oh, I, I bought, um, you know what I bought recently is that uh, gallery edition of Weapon X. Dude, seriously, I was that close to buying it, but I've got the, um, it's in the omnibus. But yeah. They're, they're large. Are they larger than the oversized? oversized? Yes, it's, the, it's an oversized one. It's gorgeous. Because <sighs> those pages are. Yeah, it's really nice. Beautiful. They are, they are impressive. Yeah. That it, Barry it, Windsor Smith art. It's too Unreal. much. Yeah. Have you read Monsters yet? His um, I tried his it, book? and I very dark. It was very, very very heavy, and then I had I ended up taking a break from it, and then it had been too long, and I forgot yes. what happened, and I thought I don't want to start again, so I just sold it. Yes, I could see how that happened. I I read it kind of in one. I, I didn't read it in one shot, but I read it uninterrupted. Like you know, like I didn't read anything else in between, and right. I I I I, killed, I crushed the whole book. Ooh, it's it's masterful, but boy, is it dark. Yeah, it's it's very very weighty. Is it is it like a topic? Because that was wasn't that originally going to be the storyline that was was going to be in the that was the Hulk story that he was putting together. That's what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. Heard. Um, that kind of got stolen apparently. By is Bill. that the story? Yeah, apparently, what happened was um, he approached the editor, whoever was editing Hulk at the time um it's barry windsor smith and he went and spoke to them and said like i've got this pitch for a, for a hulk story and it delved into his childhood and his issues with his father and all this kind of stuff and then the guy went oh thanks very much I put it in a drawer next thing you know the drawer's empty and incredible hulk 312 comes out which is basically the story and it was by bill mantlo and mantlo was oh, kind of renowned for doing that kind of thing uh -huh. uh, apparently he stole uh, he outright just took a ah oh, what was his name sci-fi writer in the 70s and i can't think of his name now um ah oh, he's basically stole this writer's idea for an, for another hulk story and really? the, the guy saw it because he was a comics fan and yeah. he and he went i won't sue if you just give me a lifetime uh, subscription to all your comics and they went okay i can't remember oh, I'm his name on who, i'm curious on who the writer was i, I like reading sci-fi books I'll have to check. Damn it. Normally I know it off the top of my head because I remember he... Ah, it's right there. I've got to suddenly throw the name at you in the middle of the conversation. That's cool. <laughs> I'm here for it. We interrupt this broadcast for a special announcement. The writer Dave forgot was Harlan Ellison. Now we return to our scheduled programming. And, and like, that's the thing with the Aaron run. It's a good year by the sound of it. So I'd yes. happily give that a go. Yes, yes. And I'm sure when I'm sure when um, I know omnibuses are your thing, I'm sure they're going to have a nice one for it because the art is oh really God. fantastic. That's a point. Yeah, I'll wait for that. Yeah, that's a really good point. You don't do the Marvel app, do you? You don't do, I do Marvel Unlimited. Yeah, I, I do. Um, I tend to read. I prefer to read the stuff I don't want on my shelves on the app. Right. Me too. Yeah. The stuff I don't want on my pull list or the stuff I missed because, you know, like before apps and stuff, like you just couldn't read everything just because of the cost yeah you know it's and even now you know i have to really kind of i have to budget out the comics that i buy because they're not cheap anymore you know you know what i also miss um in modern comics that's uh, that i wish they would do more the old advertisements that used to be in these comic books 
Is that for like the sea monkeys? Yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> like I was reading. Um, so my comic book club, the most recent one, or one of one of the last few was the Authority, right? And yeah. this was before the announcement. This was before the announcement. Uh, you know, Jam- all the James Gunn hoopla. Yes, we were reading the Authority, and at my comic book shop, it was issues one through 20 and it was 20 bucks so i'm like oh i'm definitely doing this and in them some of the advertisements are like a time capsule it's such a wonderful thing to do and and it really put me in the place of when that book came out you know it's a total y2k book and all the advertisements are like so so y2k it's great yeah like they're like yeah it was great yeah it was great like early early internet stuff there's like promos for like atari teenage riot and like deftones albums yeah what? it's great old like levi's ads yes it's great it's really cool <laughs> i completely forgot about that there's a there's an instagram page um called comic book ads who do who run all the, cool. the old ad, the ads from various points in time but i do yes. love that when, when you sometimes when you see that it's almost as ex- exciting as when you see an old comic cover <laughs> you go like yes. oh my god i remember that advert that was on the back of those issues for like three months for Contra Old, like, video or games, Dungeons like, and Dragons and yes D and D or like the Lynx arc. Remember like the yes. Lynx like game that it wasn't Game Boy but it was it was like the Atari version of the Game Boy like yeah. game console ads super cool and oh it really like brought, it's like it, it made the experience like so much more meaningful yeah um those ads kind of again they kind of helped me put myself into that Y two K mentality uh-huh. so it actually helped. A little bit of a context to the book, That's so nice. I do kind of, I do kind of miss. I don't. I, I do like having. Um, I do like the pacing of the modern day comic much more mm-hmm. than the past. But I feel like with the authority, they they kind of broke the mold in terms of pacing and, and story structure. But yes. I do miss those. I do miss those old school ads a lot. Yeah, they do add a little bit of a thrill. Do you want to share with us um, one from your next category, which is a good looking book? Oh, yeah. So I just acquired this. This was such like a wonderful bit of fate because I'm a big fan of this book and I have always had in kind of like the back of my mind like, oh, I'd love to own this one day. But it was it's always been out of reach. The price has been extraordinary. Right. But, you know, um, to shout out local comic book stores um, and why we need to support them. Lo and behold, I was at my local shop, and this is just out, and it was just for fifty bucks. And I've been in, I've been searching for this for a long time, and it's the Charles Burns, um, Whoa. like the gallery edition of Black Hole. That's enormous. Have you ever read this? I've never. Last time we spoke, we talked about Charles Burns briefly, very very briefly. But I, I've had it on my list, not that book because that is insane, and I want that now. Um, but I've never read it. I've never read Black Hole. Um, so read Black Hole. That looks it, it, incredible. That's what this is. Yeah, this is so. This is the museum uh, edition, or whatever they call it, uh, gallery edition, or artist artist edition. But uh-huh. the comic is black and white. But check the check this out. Like, oh my! God. Can you see that? Yeah. See that? And the blacks that. are so rich. They really are. And it's it's almost like a one for one of the book. It's not it's not um in, it's not the entirety of the book. Let me find oh. some good pages but the it's the pages one for one and charles burns like his like black ink work is just extraordinary like hold on i don't want to ruin the book no i'm really worried about that (laughs) it's worth it for you but like look at that right those pages i'm not even entirely sure what's going on on those pages but like it's a wonderful wonderful read let me find some more but like it's just extraordinary stuff let me find like a good splash page so when i found this oh look like I had to, like, I just had to. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh my god, that art is so cool. It looks like, um, it really reminds me of like gig uh, band posters, like tour posters. Totally, gig posters. Totally. I wouldn't be surprised if he's done some. He probably um, he must have done, or else he he's must have. In- inspired by them. Very yeah. least. I'm pretty sure he. Ha- oh, you know what he did? You know, um, Fever Ray. You know the the band, the Knife. No. The knife. Well, there's there was a side, ba- well, not a side band. It's one of the members of the knife's other project. It's called Fever Ray. Okay. And he, he did the cover for that record. Okay, that's another one I'm going to have to. Do you know how much money you're going to cost me? 
doing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this episode Wait, is going to rinse me man well you can't find this oh here we go you can't i mean you can't find this under a couple hundred dollars and this isn't mint Jeez. by the way it's but not who cares you know oh, it's not a, that. yeah I, that is incredible oh my that god that imagery is just so bold Dude, the blacks are so rich in person. It's not even like it, it, it's 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 registering on the screen, but like looking at them in person, like it looks like you can reach in. Like the detail and the blacks are so phenomenal. He's the bomb. So, and then like, how much of the I'll... story is in that book? Then, if it's not, uh, it's not the whole. It's not the whole. Um, this is phenomenal. It's not. It's not the whole story. It's. Okay. It, I think it's. I think it's like three quarters of it, maybe even less. That style is incredible. Yeah, right. How does he maintain that? Like, as an overview of the story, what? Like, how Hold on, I just... have the book. Hang on one second. I no worries. See what it looks like. that's the thing. Like, I've, I've, um, I've heard of it. It's one of those things where I didn't want to read too much about it, um, because I wanted to kind of go in blind. Yeah, this is how it is. It's chunky. Oh yeah, it, it came out over. I think it was. Um, I don't know if it was the New York Times. It came out and serialized. It was in something else. I forget what it was. And then it was finally, you know, it took him like forever to complete it. But, um, and even in this, you know, it's even stunning in this too. You know what I mean? Those, I mean, oh, I'm it's loving fantastic. that artwork. I thought the covers yeah. were going to be like that, but the interiors no. were going to be softer. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's about teenagers and it's about like teenage lust and like, you know, hormones and whatnot, but it's like, um, it's like a mutant story too. Um, and, uh, at one point, like David Fincher was going to do a movie adaptation of it. Was he? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. 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 It's really great. It's a great book. It's a really great book. It's coming back on the list. I'm sure it's on a list, but I've got so many lists now. And I've kind of got my like A one priority list and my yeah. please buy this for me list. And... Oh, dude, I have so much in the queue; it's not even funny. Yeah. But yeah, there's, I mean, there's a, you know, I wanted to bring some like stuff that was like non Marvel, but I'm, I wanted to show you, you. I wanted to show you the um, the scope of how it was originally released versus these big yeah these big pages. So, so you... that was a major find for me. That was like a, a few months ago, and like immediately snatched it up. Who... And the price was magnificent. Who printed that version? Uh, it's a fanographics book, so I wouldn't be surprised if they made that. Right. I also, I also have a Daniel Klaus artist edition um, that's that size, but I wanted to give Charles Burns some love on your show. Yeah, no, that's cool. I appreciate that, especially as it was. It's it's one that I've eyeballed a lot, but somehow never never gone for it. Well, that's the cool thing about comic books. I spoke about this with another guest of mine who we I did it. You know, it's so great speaking with collectors because. You can talk with somebody who collects the same. You can talk with two different people who collect the same thing, but you're gonna have a totally different conversation about it. Yeah. And I, I spoke with a, another comic book collector, and, we, and we, the conversation kind of revolved around how how cool comic books are because it's something that you can dis, you can be discovering books that came out 30 years ago that might have gone over your head at the time. Yes. But you're now in a place in your own life and in your own tastes to where you can meet it on its terms and appreciate it. Yeah. It's really, it's really a wonderful medium and there's so many great artists and great storytellers and so many great stories within it that you can spend, so, even if you look backwards, you can find so much stuff that you missed back in the day that now you can meet a face to face with and it not go over your head. The coolest thing, like, I speak about this too, about, you know, a lot of people you'll hear like, oh, you know, I, f I found my identity at the record shop. You know, I found my identity looking through records or I found it, you know, pff, there's not really anything like the record shop other than the comic book store. Like yeah. that was my record shop was the comic book store where, you know, when I first got there, I was reading, you know, Spider-Ham and, you know, Spider-Man books. Like I was, a you know, a little boy. Yeah. But you, you're exposed, you know, I, I was exposed to, you know, The Watchmen. I was exposed to Dark Knight Returns. I was exposed to Concrete and Cerebus. I, I remember seeing them and the cool guys behind the counter. But that's what they were reading. But I wasn't. Yeah. But, but when I came to a certain age, I started and I was reading comics and I wanted more out of them. 
I, I remember like, oh, let me check that out now. Let me check out Watchmen. Let me check out Concrete. Let me check out uh, uh, Sandman or whatever. You know, let me check out Dark Knight. You know, all that stuff, You're yeah. when you're exposed to it, uh, it sticks with you, and when you're at a when you're at a certain point in your life, hopefully, if you if you if you stick with it, you'll want to go and check that out, and it's it's very nourishing that way. It I is. love the media. That that is one of the beautiful things about about this whole medium, and it, it's funny when people do kind of go, yeah, but that's old stuff. And you go like, no, universal it doesn't matter because there's some yeah. stuff you can read, and like we've said about X Factor, there's some stuff you can read that's just aged fantastically well. Some sure. of it that you think will age brilliantly doesn't necessarily make the cut but it almost doesn't matter i mean like there are some people chatting away to me on instagram and they're going like i love that 90s jim lee era x-men and i'm going like who's talking to me because you don't know you just see a little name and then you go you look <laughs> the age i was when i was reading that and you're getting yeah. into it the same way like how cool is that like it's a beautiful thing it's time and again you'll meet yeah you'll meet people like that you know again like so some people will say like, oh, like, you know, like I found my identity, like going to flea markets and finding random things, you know, like, but everybody has like that experience. Hopefully for some people it's the toy store. I don't know. Train, the, the, you know, toy train shop, whatever it be. Yeah. For me, it was like, I, I found a, a lot of, um, I discovered a lot about myself in the comic book store and it's been like, you know, it's, it's like a lifelong passion for me. I love the medium. I think it's one of the coolest, even like like we live in the the era of the MCU and it's technologically fantastic it is the vision realized it's it's what everyone wanted back in the 80s when when you know when comic book movies started and you know you would see like the Dolph Lundgren Punisher that yeah. was like the thing that you would find at the only at conventions on a weird VHS tape and <laughs> there was always like that dream of well, like the David Marvel Hasselhoff movie. Nick Fury <laughs> yes <laughs> And we live in that era now where it's really come to fruition and you could really do anything with these characters and it's great and it's exciting. But for me, it will not beat reading a comic book. No. I still, it, I still believe in, in that medium and I, I love the, the possibilities of it. And it's just so boundless, so much more boundless than any CGI. And it's just more exciting to me personally. It's, it's funny you say that. Um, I was listening to an interview with Brian K. Vaughan and bear in mind, like Brian K. Vaughan has worked in TV films and comics. Um, so he's, he's been in all those games basically. Um, and he says to this day, like comics are the greatest storytelling medium. And as much as I hear people going this, you know, this should be a movie. This, <laughs> this storyline right. should be a movie. And you go like, why should it? It's right. brilliant now. Why popcorn it later? Like, like relish what you've got and, and recommend it to people. You know, yes. don't don't kind of play it down by going, this is good, but it should be a movie like go right. dudes, read this, read this. thing. Someone sent sure. me a photo today. today, I think it was this morning going, I just found a load of books in a shop in uh, in this little village and then a load of Batman books. Is, is there anything, anything that you want me to pick up for you? And I went, I've got the ones I want, but you need to get Batman year one. Take it home oh, and read it. And he went, oh, OK. Yeah, OK, I will. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, this is I mean, the guy just, that reads you, comics. You did that person a favor, a huge favor. Yeah, I hope so. Because, I mean, like, how can you go wrong with Batman in one? You can't. There's certain things that are just, it, you know, there are certain titles and certain runs that are proper literature. Yeah. And that really counts. I mean, that, that Mazzuccelli art is ingrained in my brain. Mm-hmm. I'm a bit. One of the books that I was gonna bring on is the Stereos Polyp. His the one that he I wrote. I never and, read that. Fantastic. What? So when? Sorry, he wrote one that he wrote when. It's a Stereos. It's called the. No, hold on. It's called a Stereos Polyp. I'll grab it. This is this has actually been on my list longer than any other book, and I've somehow never managed to pick it up. I don't actually know what it's about. Is he supposed it's to be about a an architect? Oh, he's an architect. It's about an architect, and it's very. It's it's not it's not here it's not it's not uh, spandex and capes. No, but it's wonderful. It's like cartooning. It's like proper, like you know. But it's beautiful. It's like designed beautifully, and like it's a real, really, really deep and profound book. It's really good. I I really love it. Yeah, I was gonna bring it on. I thought that I thought this would be kind of too on the nose. But yeah, no, the stereos. I don't think anything's on the nose as long as it's something you love. And like that, that book yeah. has literally been on my wish list the longest. Oh yeah, and I've somehow yeah, yeah, never sure. managed to pick it up. 
and I don't know yeah. why. I would, um, between this and Black Hole, you, you have a real nice season of reading. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully other people listening will also benefit from that because like, these, this is oh, good stuff, so. but it's the stuff that people just aren't talking about you know yeah and that's the stuff what i love about com again like it's stuff that you discover on your own terms and when you do it's fantastic you know like i don't like i i'm just now discovering um love and rockets like i didn't I, i'm not gonna front like i wasn't reading love and rockets in, in 1988 i was in fifth grade <laughs> you know so like i'm reading it now and it's fantastic you know and i'm there's no shame in that no um i think that's what's wonderful about the medium is it you can you can you can come to it on your own terms and it can grow with you it's it's fantastic and just because it's old doesn't mean that it's not relevant it's really great yeah no that's it's, it's a good shout it's really tr there's a lot of truth in that um it's it's fun I'm, I'm much i'm trying to look out for strangers in paradise for much the same reason because i never read it i heard really good things it's very character that driven we need to yeah. get on this <laughs> yeah next time we're gonna I'm be so well read <laughs> yeah Yes, yeah, so I've read so the beauty Polly, of it too. And I also yeah. read the following novels. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the Asterius Polyp is really, really profound. It's really good stuff. And it's nothing like a Batman or Daredevil book or anything like that. Although those are amazing. Mm -hmm. It's a different just a, a just a different gear altogether. It's a, yeah. It's 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 really good. Yeah. 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 I yeah. desperately really want to pick it up. I mean I mean the thing when it when we're gonna have a look at your complete set now, and that might yeah. go back to the superhero stuff, I don't know. But um yeah, do you want to share your complete set with us? Well, uh, so I have two. Is that okay? Two's fine. You can sneak, okay, sneak so the, two in. <laughs> so the first one, it's short. So, well, first of all, I have like, uh, again, like I have my comics in three different places. I have the stuff that I've acquired in the last five years in, in my home. I have a storage unit with a few boxes there. Right. And then I have a bulk of like my 90s stuff in Florida. And in Florida, I have like, the whole run of McFarlane Spider Man. I have a good chunk of Amazing Spider Man at home, but I, I you know, I don't have that here. Um, but we're gonna keep on the theme with Jason Aaron. Okay. And I have all of um, God of Thunder in singles. This, this entire run, yeah. So I read it all in um, sorry uh, the Marvel Unlimited app. I don't know if I we probably spoke about this on my, our running out of space episode that you Funnily were on. Enough, we did, and we I did mention it. that you you gotten into Thor, and it was, I think you said that you weren't really big on Thor, and then you read the Aaron run. Is that right? I, that's correct. I have never cared about Thor. I mean, Walt Simonson, I care about, and yeah, that was right, a so. big deal for me. <laughs> yeah, but like reading like the the this as like a fantasy story. Yeah unbelievable and it made me really care about thor and it's kind of one of the best kind of i think gore is one of the greatest villains since carnage personally yes. yeah i think it's so fantastic <laughs> since carnage was oh, he yeah. your favorite like no he's not my favorite Bes besides gore <laughs> well what i'm saying is i don't think there's been a better character that's been created a better villain since carnage can you name a better villain since There's Carnage? Thought. All the ones I think of were created before, but they maybe had their highlights after. Right. I'm saying since creation. <sighs> I mean, yeah, Venom. Venom's way better than Carnage. What I'm saying is... I can't think the, of one. The best, for me, the best villain created since Carnage is Gore. 100% for me. And the story of Th uh, this, this particular run, the God of Thunder run, Jason Aaron's art the the what he does with thor but also Assad ribic's artwork it's it's just it's it's like it's proper fantasy it, it goes yeah. beyond it goes beyond superhero storytelling it's it's fantasy it's literature completely yeah so, so, so i finished i finished the reading it on on the marvel unlimited app yeah and the covers are amazing and it's like Assad ribic on the whole run it's not just it's not just a few issues it's the whole thing um so i finished I finished it and I'm like, oh, I have to own these books. <laughs> I, I have these have to be like I have to like burden myself with carrying these books around from home to home for the rest of my life. I, I need to I need these to weigh me down. So the run continued after God of Thunder. Yeah. But um, uh, and, and then you get into Jane Foster, who and Jane Foster is so cool. I love 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 Jane. But I, you know, I had to, I had to get this entire run. I thought it was so magnificent. Are you? Did you? Do you not have the Jane Foster Thor issues? 
I had her first appearance. I have a 9.8 first appearance of Jane as, not the what-if issue, but the first uh, Jane Foster as Thor issue. Right. Like Thor number one or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I have that. But I don't have I don't have that Sorry. whole Thor run with Jane. I right. have that one issue. It's a it's a long run. I've read the whole thing. It's extraordinary, um, and um, it makes me so depressed knowing how how terrible the movie was. Oh, dang! I was so disappointed in that in that movie. I mean, Marvel could have really had their own version of the Dark Knight as if they did this Thor run as a trilogy. It would have been magnificent. They shouldn't have allowed it. I, I actually really like Taika Waititi. Um, I love him as a as a director. I, the first Thor film he did, I I really liked. Ragnarok. Oh, I loved yeah. it. Um, did you see Jojo Rabbit? I haven't yet. Oh my god, it's so good. Like it's such a good film. It's it's not like one of the greatest films ever or anything like that. But it's just it it got me somewhere, and I wasn't sure what to expect from it, and it caught me off guard, and it was great. Um, yeah. Uh, I can't remember what there was something with the Wilder people. Now I can't think of the name of the film. But he's done some really emotional films. You know, mm-hmm. they kind of yeah. they can be a bit odd a or catch off guard. But and then this happened, and I was horrified because I thought, like, actually, you know, if he stays away from the funny stuff, or at least he can subtly weave it in. Instead, it was just basically Police Academy with Thor. I'm like, dude, it hurt my feelings. That's such a that waste. they would that they reduced Jane to just a love interest. Yeah, Jane Foster is like. The baddest. She's the best. Uh huh. She's better. She's better than a god. She's like you know. In, in that run, when it culminates, <laughs> That's and Jane the thing. Foster is oh, because so good. I haven't read the whole run yet. So they've they've released it. They've released Omnibus One. Uh huh. And Omnibus Two is coming out later this year. Yeah. And I'm gonna have. I'm gonna get that. And then I'm gonna read the whole thing because oh. I've only read half. I've read some of the Jane Foster stuff. I read that God of Thunder run. But yes. I've never read the entire thing, so. Oh, Jane's Jane story it. arc is magnificent, and I remember at the time everyone's like, "There's a Lady Thor! Oh my God, oh. what is Marvel doing?" And and you know, like, I ignored it just because I wasn't reading superhero books at the time. Um, but when I discovered Jane Foster and Jason Aaron's run, and man. I could not recommend that more. I mean, that is the pinnacle of what a superhero book could be. Yeah. And if she was reduced to a love interest in the movie, oh. it's just like, it makes me angry. And the, the struggle she goes through should be really poignant. You know, it's handled well. You in the had comments. it all. That, it's not like they didn't have the blueprint. The run is mad. Like it's, it's the guy ha- cemented his legacy in this Thor run. I mean, he, if he never wrote anything again, he would always have that, this Thor run. Yeah. Thankfully we have this great Punisher run, but like, <laughs> Uh, it doesn't even as great as the Punisher run is. It doesn't touch the heights that his Thor run has. I mean, the, it's, you said you wanted to share a second complete set. Yes, yes. Is that a? And this, is, this is off the beaten path. This is um, all the pop bots. Like I don't know if you are you a fan of Ashley Wood. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so so I discovered Ashley Wood from a um, uh, a mini series called Automatic Kafka, which I also have all the issues of. Is it, was de- it was a decent. Yeah, uh, it was. Joe Casey, I oh, think. Was it Joe been. Casey? I think so. But bananas. Bonkers book. I have I have those. Um I have those on the shelf. But this this in particular was really great because Ashley Woods, like, he really like took the ball and hit his stride with these. Uh-huh. It didn't finish properly, but I managed like and I bought all these at the time. Like I haven't gone back to buy these. Um, but I have the complete run of IDW, like all the pop bots and I'm a big Ashley Wood fan. I wish he would do comics more. Yeah, me too. But, uh, he's all about you know proper art now and toys and stuff, and even those are a little expensive. But these are really cool. Oh, I I was looking at those, and by the time I found them, they were so expensive. And then um, IDW announced that they were going to collect all those books in one. Yeah, book. that was one that. Oh yes, I recognize that cover. Oh, yeah, else is on these are super cool, super oh, psychedelic, sexy. So cool edgy yeah his stuff is the best and then like towards the end i think he just wanted to wrap it up these aren't that great it's more like like this last issue it, it, it's like it's it's almost as if like like it's like paintings with just a little bit of artwork i don't want to crack the i don't want to crack the spine but yeah those that that stuff was really influential and like i think i was like in my 20s when those were coming out and that like really kind of um 
it expanded my aesthetic. Uh huh. You know, like his style is so singular. Yeah, Did zombies read- vs. robots. Yeah. I've read a little bit of it. Yeah, it's just you know, honestly, he got a little incoherent. I feel like he fo- he started focusing more on like the artwork than the story. Yeah, um, which is cool. I'm I'm all for that. And like he's like he's a visionary. He's a, he's one of those like artists that's like a world builder, like a proper world builder. You could see a painting of Ashley Woods, and you have a whole story in your head. Yeah. So I, I'm not mad at that, you know. But um, if you could somehow, if 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 somebody could either i don't know if he could find like a writer that would suit his style or i don't you know i don't want to it's not like i can give i should be giving him advice at all but i really <laughs> i really enjoy his comic book work more than anything like his fine art is spectacular but there's something about the comic book medium that and his style that really connected with me yeah it's funny as well because like he can he can experiment quite a lot with his style so some of it's um very simple inks and some mm-hmm. of it's like full wash painted artwork yeah. and, and like and and it's just whatever it whatever style he's got I mean, it's still undeniably him um yes but it it works every time and that's the thing like there there are points in zombies versus robots at least and i assume this was the same of of pop but i wasn't sure what to expect from it um that it was more art than story and i was quite happy i think like there are a couple of artists that are like that for me but not many literally only a couple one being ashley wood um and I think probably the other one is EPHK, whose whose books I'm trying to get hold of. Um, EPHK. EPHK, who did? Oh God! It was a. There's a series called Morth Morth Vallis. Uh, oh, I can't reach it. And also did a book called like Necronomicon. Hang on a minute. I'm just going to try and reach for it. Okay. Yeah. Very very different style. Very different style to Ashley Wood, but it's that uh-huh. thing of like the art is. It's a very small book. The, uh, you can't tell from the oh, cover, pretty. but it's it, again, it's got this um, yep. band poster vibe to it yes. more than anything. Yes. And um, I got this and just absolutely fell in love That's with wonderful. it. And I, yeah. he does a lot of art books, but they've also got some some comic stories in. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, and it's lovely stuff. It's it's a little bit, you could argue that some of it's quite sexualized. Um sure. It's just beautiful stuff, and it's shamelessly so. But you're looking at just going like, as long as my kids don't find this book, this is just something stunning to look at. It's so nicely put together. Um, I think otherwise, I generally don't go for art books or anything. But those two, they they trump everybody with that. I would just happily buy an art book of theirs. Yes, and I think that's what Ash. I think that's Ash. What Ashwood does now is just uh, he, he focuses on his. I mean, I'd love to have an Ashley Wood painting in my home. I mean, I wouldn't. I, I would definitely love that. Hint, Ashley. Um, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> get in touch. But to circle to circle back, I think that automatic Kafka is the best that I'll get for you know to marry a, a, a good a good writing style with his artwork because the Joe Casey does a really good. It's a really wild story. It hasn't been collected yet, and I don't see it often. Like, I don't see it talked about a lot. It's a really great. It's a really cool subversive comic book, think- and it, it introduced me. I bought that off the rack. It introduced me to Ashley Wood, and that's what got me into pop. Ah, right. Yeah, because um, I think I mixed it up with Global Frequency, which was another kind of Wildstorm book, I think, at the time, which was a Warren Ellis one. Um, but they don't seem to collect that stuff very much. They they did collect Global Frequency a cool. few years ago, and it was okay. Um, but the one I wanted, funnily enough, was, was Automatic Kafka, and I like I like I I forget about it. But I, if I spot it, I'm not having it. <laughs> like it's happening, yeah. and I don't know it's what it pretty, is. It's pretty. It's also I, pretty salacious because it's. Oh, is it's, it? It's kind of. It, it, it gets kind of blue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's. It's cool. wild. It's cool. No, no, no. It's it's for it's for mature audiences, but like it's it's really it's subversive stuff. It's cool. Very oh. edgy, in a good way. So DC need to black label that basically. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, there are some really cool characters introduced. Yeah, is it quite long? Absolutely. No, I think it was like six issues, was it six? maybe eight issues. Oh, okay. I'm going to keep an eye out for that. Yeah. I think you can still find them on eBay pretty cheap. And if IDW... Like no one cares. No, that's the thing. I think they... It's selling it the right way. I think like Ashley Wood hopefully is interesting enough now to people who know just enough that people might really desperately want it. Yeah. But, um, I love his stuff. Like when, when they announced that Pop Bot collector edition, 
a couple of years mm. ago, I was so excited. It was one of those moments I'm looking through the solicitations and just went, like, <gasps> all the oxygen is out of the room. Like, I want that book. Yeah. And then it just never came out. Oh, it didn't? No. So I've, uh, I've been wanting those pop bot books for so when it, when you showed me I'm like oh my god they're, they're real <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> big fan big fan that that was you know there's certain like eras that like are influential and for me it was that era and you know i can find stuff like um even in in movies like you know around the same time as pop bot you know movies like let the right one in was coming out and like you know there's like certain moments in time that just you know have big impact on me and ashley wood was definitely part of uh a uh, uh, an imprinting kind of era for me. Oh, right. I, I can totally understand. He's one of those people, when you do see him, there's something that that triggers. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, a yeah. friend of mine is also into his stuff, but for a completely different reason, because he did a lot of the design work for Metal Gear Solid. Um, yes. At a certain period in time. Yes. 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 So. And also the toys. The toys are awesome. Very expensive. What, his and robots? Probably, yeah, but he does, like, he does really intricate toys, but they're very expensive, and, mm. and like the turnaround, like the pre-order time was like obscene. It was like over a year or something like that. Really? Yeah, but they're really cool. Very highly articulated. Yeah. Is it three yeah. A toys? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I was eyeballing one of the robots from that from Zombies versus Robots, and uh, yeah, yeah, yes. it was just like, uh, is that going to come out at a point where I can afford it? Because right. like, oh, it ain't right. cheap. But it's got yeah. proper satchels made of uh-huh. satchels. Oh, yeah, guns, and... satchels, yeah. even nice sneakers. Articulation's great. The hair looks great. On the, You know, he does, like, a whole line of, like, female characters, and he has, like, cool soldiers and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I just wish he would do comic books again. I really love his style. Ashley, I know you're listening. Can you do some comics? For... <laughs> Please. Um, so, speaking of favorite purchases, sort of yes. weird non-segue, um... You can can you share your favorite purchase with us? Yes. Okay, so I bought this off of the rack just blindly, okay? 1988 in the direct market in my shop. Mm-hmm. On the rack. Oh my god, I used to have that. This is the book, like this I, this is my excuse me. This is my reader copy, like I, I it's it's not mint condition. There's even a McFarlane signature. I went to no. I went to a convention that he was at in like 1991. It was him and Rob Liefeld. I have a New Mutants 98 signed, but I got to show off this. This is like one of my favorite books of all time. I remember opening this up and like discovering McFarlane's artwork for the first time and just not knowing who Todd McFarlane was, but like by the end of it, he was my favorite ever. <laughs> and um, this just holds like so much sense. I, like, I, I remember like, I can put myself in the moment of seeing this on the rack and taking it and, and just putting it in my pile yeah. in the shop. I, I can I, I can I can transport back to that moment. Are you fighting of, uh, off other people who might want it? Just like anyone nearby? No, it was just there, dude. It. It like eighty eight. It was just nineteen eighty eight. Spider Man on the rack, just boom. So that's that's it for those um, listening, not watching. This is Amazing Spider Man number three hundred, um, which was uh, written by David Michelinie and. Uh, illustrated by Todd McFarlane, and it's the first full appearance of Venom. Yes. Um, so and go. I used to have it. I managed to find it much later. Um, so if you can imagine it cost a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, and the sad thing is, is that because like I have it, I, I do have it signed, and it could be verified. But now, like I'm, not, I can't go and get this graded. Because the way that it's set, the, the way that this industry is set up now is that there needs to be like a CGC witness. Oh yeah. On site. So, and like, look, it's not it's not about the value or like you know I'm not I'm not going to go and flip this, but I would like to preserve it. Like it is getting yellowed. I doubt this would even be a high grade. But what's cool about this is like you can notice like if you look at can you see the signature? I can. Yeah. yeah so Todd. So McFarlane's signature has kind of changed since then. Oh, has it? You know, I mean, you could, you could, well, you could still kind of. Now he does Todd McFarlane here. It's oh. just kind of T McFarlane. You'll see it every now and again where he'll do something like this. But like, it's cool to see how his signature has kind of evolved. And I would just want this preserved because this is, you know, it's kind of getting yellowed. Wait. The spine is in okay shape, but like, I would like to get it slabbed. But whatever. It looks it's like it's in a, a much sturdier plastic 
Yeah, cupboard. this is like the, the old school CGC right here. These like plastic oh, sleeves. What they, right. <laughs> they give it that extra sheen. Yeah, as right. Well. Per- like, oh. Perfect for an internet camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is, um, it's funny because I think when we spoke on Running Out of Space, um, I did say to you like the first American comic that I bought because it was all UK reprints in England for most of my life. So you just got what right. you could. Um, but the first American comic book that I saw in a shop in England was Amazing Spider-Man 316, which is the Venom leaning over Spider-Man. Like it was Venom when he first appeared. I mean, he's got a pretty iconic look, but I guess he's been emulated quite a lot over the years. But if you grew up seeing Spider-Man in his black costume, that was very iconic. That change in costume, I think like it's the kind of thing that the internet would have killed today before they'd even launched it almost. You know, like sure. you can't change Spider-Man's costume. It looked incredible. I loved that outfit. I loved that you Spider-Man. You like outfit. the black costume? Yeah, I've got the tattoo the of, of that spider on my arm. Do you? Like nice. But yeah, it, but I was 316, in my three sixteen. Three sixteen is the first. It's the first cover that Venom appears on. Yes, right. I think if he appears on three one five, it's maybe just his head. I'm not sure. I think it was like I can't remember. But three one six definitely. I'd have to look up three one five. Um. I think he's fighting Hydra Man on 315, and I'm not sure if he's got like his headset and like, it says, like, guess who's back or something, but a full appearance, right. categorically, right. yes. And it was that oh. ridiculously cool. Um, Flipping through the McFarlane issues, it's so striking. Yeah. It's so, his, his artwork, it's not perfect. And looking, looking at it through the vantage of, um, of um, age and maturity, not the maturity, just growing older, um, and aesthetics changing, like, it's not perfect artwork at all. Whereas at the time I was like, this is the greatest art I've ever seen in my life, you know, just because I, you know, I was a teenager, whatever. Yeah. But like, you know, like going through the stages where you discover Mike Mignola and you discover, you know, Frank Quietly or Ashley Wood, and you know, your your palette expands. Yes. To, you know, and even coming to appreciate Jack Kirby, and then, you know, you look back at McFarlane and you're like, well, actually, like this isn't the best, but it has so much energy. Yeah. And it's so so cool like it's striking you know it's like it demands your attention as, as much of a mcfarlane acolyte and fan as i am and and how important he was for me like growing up craven's last hunt is like the pinnacle of spider-man storytelling for me yeah there's i actually really enjoyed um jms's run but nothing quite hits like craven's last hunt and the imagery of that zek um, implemented with Spidey is it's ingrained in my mind. It's like the best for me. Yeah, it, it's funny. It's one of those things that we talked about it quite a lot on um, on the on our podcast. It comes up a fair bit because it's just one of those things. That anytime Spider Man comes up, it's hard not to think of that story because like that's yes. the first place my brain goes to. Yes, um, and it's one and of death of Gwen Stacy is pretty badass too. Uh, yeah, I didn't get to read that until quite late, and it's I want to read it again now with less weight attached because i've read it once i want to put it over there i don't want to go back and read it again um yeah for the time it's pretty incredible i mean also don't get me wrong i love ditko like i love 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 ditko yeah but you know that's after the fact i wasn't born you know i wasn't reading spider-man when ditko was drawing it that's something that's you know in the past for me that i had to discover almost as like homework yeah uh but yeah ditko spidey's fantastic too so so that was your favorite your favorite purchase and that is one hell of a purchase because yes bought for the wonderful price of a dollar fifty no way yeah oh yeah oh man i think that was a pound here but i think i i think mine cost me 30 quid well, plus 25 cents it. for the bag and board <laughs> of course yeah. <laughs> all counts so yeah. last up could you share something that you highly recommend Yes, and this is off the beaten path too. I like um, it. This, I like it already. This is, I, yeah, I wanted to give a shout out to a um, female cartoonist. Um, it's Eleanor Davis's "Hard Tomorrow." Oh, and this is wonderful. Uh, she drew it too, and it's it's a it's a it's a really cool book. It's almost it came out before the pandemic, but it's very prescient in terms of the theme. There's social justice in here. There is um, van life in here. Van there is life. kind of like a yeah, like people living out of their vans, like kind of just eschewing like normal society and kind of oh. living kind of a nomadic life. Yeah, it's it's this really kind of um, 
touching story about this um this woman and her dope smoking husband who's like a survivalist and she's um she works in like a nursing home and there's some social unrest and it's like um it's kind of like an alternate rea- not re- like alternate history where there's like um it's not placed in our necessary reality but it's within the confines of it it's just kind of an alternate timeline sort of thing okay. it's not science fiction or whatever it's just not current events like she made up like a lot of like um moments like a lot of like um uh characters and political movements and stuff like that like it's kind of its own it's in its own kind of world oh. uh it's familiar it's just kind of like a revisionist kind of world that i'm kind of doing i'm not really articulating it well but um no it's 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 um it's really good it's actually something that I really would recommend, um, just a, a out of the box kind of read. Um, Who's the that publisher? It's made uh, drawn and quarterly. Oh. yeah, and it's like really well done. Like the art is really good, and she she did it herself. And she hasn't come out with anything since. But Maybe like, yeah, that it's one like a story it's, she wanted to tell. There, no, there's there's one before this that I haven't read. Oh, that she, okay. But uh, I guess it's like a. It's like a, it's like a parallel world. It's like a, it's set within like, you know, it's not like magic or anything like that. It's just, there's, there's like political, there's like a political movement within it that, you know, it's not not based in our reality. It's just like, it's, it's its own made up kind of fictionalized kind of um, political sphere, I suppose. Um, But yeah, it's really cool. It kind of has like, kind of like anarchy undertones and like, um, kind of like really kind of like a punk rock ethos to it okay but not it's not like you know edgy badass sort of stuff but just like the the thematically it's 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 quite it's, it's quite good um and it's a yeah and the one, storytelling complete, is good complete story in one book yeah oh yeah this is it and it's not it's not floppies like it came out like this and um it's just really touching. Like it really affected me. It's like this really, it's, it's just like a really nicely done story, really self-contained, some great themes. The, and the, the characterizations are very, um, authentic. How did you come across it? I'll read the back. Yeah. It's, it, oh, how did I, uh, yeah. probably some reading it on some blog or something oh. or hearing about it or something else. I don't, or maybe it could have been just recommended or maybe I saw it like in a magazine or something, but, um, yeah, I'm trying to find a blur, but no, it's no, it's really good. This is it's like a really it's if it's it's kind of like an out of the box book, but like it's it's like a it's not spandex and capes. It's it's like a human story, and it's really good. It's the the she has a really good voice. That's really what it comes down to. I like her voice as a writer, and I'm right. Uh, I look forward to whatever she puts out now. I'm a fan after reading this. No. So when you've got something in front of me, I'm, I, I mean, I don't, I have such, it's not a poker face. It's uh, are you, have you got wind? That's kind of the look I tend to generally have. Um, uh-huh. So I'm looking at that book going, I've never heard of that book. How have I never heard of this book? And it, I'm, I'm interested straight off because like you clearly it's hit you in some way. Yeah. I want to try that book. So, like, between... Oh, my God, you've listed a ton of stuff that I really want to pick up now tonight. Cool. <laughs> and that's what this is yeah. about, you know? This is... Yeah. There, that's I what's think, great about the medium, too. Yes. Because like, you can constantly be discovering it. And, like, um, there's no sense of, like, what, you haven't read that yet? And if there is, like, that's that's not somebody that you want to hang out with. What's exactly. Great about comic books is, what's great about comic books is that, like, well, I don't know about these days. I mean, I, well, that still exists. Like, when you find somebody that reads comic books, you're like... We need to talk right now. <laughs> what are you reading? Do you want to know what I'm reading? Because it's like it's really hard to find our people. Like, yeah, I'll be like the coffee shop, or I'll be in public, and I'll, you know, it's hard to tell now because of the MCU who reads comics versus who are just into the movies. Yeah, or who just want to wear a T-shirt. Exactly. But if, you know, when I find somebody who like reads comics, I just want to like zero right in on that. I want to if we're if we're in a, a public place, I want to go find a corner and just gab about like what they're reading. <laughs> recommendations what i could talk about yeah you know like any you know that's really what's so cool about it's like it's like it's not like a secret society because it's obviously mainstream but like people that are really into it you're hard pressed to find them generally yeah i think you you get still 
I mean, that, I know people sometimes refer to people that just kind of dip in as tourists. And I think that's kind of unfair. Um, but when it's your, it, it, it can become your life. Like the comics are my life. And, and when, when I've tried to stop reading them or buying them, and it's normally been under some sort of duress, you know, it's not a decision I wanted to make. There'll be another right. reason why. But I, I would think about them the whole time. And it might be that I'm wondering what certain characters are doing. And then I go like, I want to go back and just see how they are. <laughs> Yeah. You know, because it's real to me to a degree, or, or like I just care about these. Yeah, you know, they're ingrained. They're a part of my my life, and yeah. uh, or else it might just be like, what what are people picking up? What's what's out there right now? What am I missing? What's good? Yeah, yeah, what's good? And uh, that's what, what did I miss back then? Yeah, like, what what did I not read back then? You know, like I need to be. You know, like for me, like when I when I became a parent, I realized like two years in, I'm like, wow, I haven't read a thing. Like I have not read at all, and that bothered me. And I wasn't in the headspace to read a like a novel, you know. So I, I but I, I said to myself, I have to read. And um, for me, comic books have always gone in waves where I'll read a lot and then I'll quit for a little bit. I'll read stuff here and there, but then I'll get back into it with pull lists and stuff like that. And then like I'll, it's like an ebb and flow. Uh -huh. And at that time in my life, when you know, when I, as a new parent, I was definitely, I was definitely not reading a thing. So I figured. Um, a good way to on ramp getting back into reading was comic books. So I almost like rediscovered my love all over again for comics. And it's just been, it's been full force for, I mean, I've, I've, I'm having a really solid run of like six years now of just steady reading comics, like no break. Uh huh. Is that and with I've made some books with novels as well? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm back reading novels too as well. But um, no, I'm full force comics, and you know, I gave up. I gave up Marvel and DC for a long time during that. During my explanation of like you know, ebbing and flowing within the medium, yeah, and you know, picking up and, and actively reading, going to the comic book shop every week, um, and I and you know, there was a time when I was just completely turned off to Marvel and DC. Other than like Elseworlds DC, I always love that stuff. That's like my favorite type of DC stuff. But in terms of like superheroes. I was turned off for a very long time. Jonathan Hickman bro brought me back to Marvel. You know, I know you didn't like this, but Al Ewing's in Immortal Hulk, uh -huh. like I, I think that is a modern masterpiece of the character. Um, but you know, people like to say, you know, that, you know, people like to kind of downplay superhero books. You know, the, there's like the whole like indie comic set. Yes. You know, it, it, they kind of look down on you know, the big two, but they really did something extraordinary with the, the building of those characters that really is tapped into like our collective. Like they really, there's something about those characters that um, have really captured our minds and unlike any other creator owned thing, and there's some wonderful creator owned books out there and there's some wonderful indie books out there, but the, their foundation is based on superhero books, yeah. whether or not it's Black Hole or whatever. Um, but also, there, I don't think there's ever going to be anything that can touch what Marvel and DC did with these characters. I mean, there's some great ones that came out. You know, Hellboy is amazing. Yes. Um, there are all sorts of characters that have been created that that hit those highs, but nothing quite hits like Marvel and DC. Like, there's something about those characters that really they captured something in us yeah. and they continue to do so. And they continue to, to tell us about us. They can, they can really tell us so many wonderful things about our psychology. Um, and they're just, it's unlike anything else. It's, it, they're really, really fantastic. I think a part of it is the, it's the richness and depth of the, of that world building as well, you yeah. know, and it's, it's like, there are so many, there are so many, things to choose from in there it's like the ultimate sweet shop basically you know you yeah. can walk in and find you will find something even if you're going oh, I don't want to. and then you will find something because it's yeah it's there and like you say like you get people that come from india as well and they where do they want to go most of the time not, not everybody but you yeah. know that they want to even just for a bit i just want to tell that one daredevil story and then, yes. I'll, then I'll, I'll leave you know yes but yes at some point I, I mean, look, that's what happened with Bendis. That's where Bendis came from. He was writing indie comics, but he he, right. he wanted to get his teeth into Daredevil, and what an incredible Daredevil run that is! It's incredible. Um, that that's one of my runs in storage. 
Is it? Oh, I God, have it here. Yeah, that was one of my stuff, runs. Isn't it? It's fantastic. And then like it's followed fantastic. up by Ed Brubaker, which was another. And he, again, he was mostly kind of like he was writing crime comics and stuff, wasn't he? And then Proper, he brought that. Uh, yes. He, and he's kind of gone back to doing that because, of course, like, you know, mm-hmm. I've done, I've dipped my toe in and I want to go back to doing my own thing. And that's cool. I love it. But you can't not, you know. And it's like you were saying earlier as well about the Kirby stuff. And I know that, like, on the show, we, we often talk about that whole kind of going through childhood, going, that mm-hmm. guy's art. I know everyone's saying it's amazing, but. Right. What? And then you you hit something when you're older where you just go, oh my God, Jack Kirby was just, just a goddamn genius. Yes. And it's I it, it's that age thing. It's when you look back and you yes. you can comics let you move through time in a way as well that I don't think anything else quite does, especially when you've got two big universes to choose from. Because for the most part, it's just never ending. You know, it's it's what else does that? What else does that? Nothing. And 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 like the 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 characters, particularly within Marvel and DC somehow they're able to constantly be reinvented but not change you just see different aspects of the their archetype and it really yeah. is I, I know morrison has this rap of how there are modern day greek gods but he's absolutely right yeah they tell us so that they are a mirror of our psyche and and our kind of a, the creative spirit with that that is in within us but it's also telling of our morals and values and there's just something about those characters that have really tapped into our collective and it's an endless wellspring of of um of um allegories that you can express through these particular it's this very it's these very particular characters that and and it's very hard to do that with anything else yeah it's very hard i know that i'm kind of being maybe over the top with them because they are just kind of heroes. But like, if you really dive into some, what the greats have done with them, yeah, it, they've really done something extraordinary. That's it's, it's, it's a symbiosis between the reader and the character where they're tapping into something deep within us that none of no other medium can really, really can. And it's silly because it's like superheroes and tights and stuff, but the symbolism and the psychology are, are really really profound it's, in like a, in an endless kind of boundless way it's there's nothing like it like you said now what i would like to say about the movies is that when i see when i go to watch these movies and these tv shows i almost view it in the same way that when i want to hear a like a band cover another song yes Absolutely. i want to see how they did it yeah yeah it's it's funny because that's that's literally the second time i've ever heard anyone say that and yeah. and the first time was me. Um, I I see the films as a cover version. Yes, completely. For sure. So like, I mean, the, the whole marriage between comics and and film it's it's like a it's more like a distant cousin. There is something there, like that underground yeah. music and comics. To me, yeah, there's a marriage off screen somewhere that you you yeah. don't get to see. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I kind of think like the films are a cover version of that thing, and it's it's nice. And, when, and they can like, be wonderful. Yeah. You know, yeah. covers can work, but um, it is sure. it is a version. But I mean, it's good when you hear a song that gets you into the other band because part that's part of their thing is to get you to look. look this is a great song. You know, now go find that band and go listen to them because they're awesome. Um, and I want this medium to keep going. And I think the only way we can help the medium keep yes. going is to is to support it. So yeah, it's an interesting support time. Your local comic shop for and, sure. Do you want to? Name your local comic shop so that we're feel free. Sure. So uh, it's Earth Two Comics in Sherman Oaks. Earth Fantastic Comics. shop. Yep, Earth Two Comics. Nice. There was a great shop in Los Angeles that that went under years ago. It was called Meltdown, and it contributed to my comic book knowledge and it expanded my um, taste level for comics tremendously. Again, these shops. They're very influential. You walk in, you get exposed to things you might not even be prepared to be exposed to. You may not get to them for a few years, but just going in and looking around, you'd be surprised at what you gravitate towards. It's it's a really great experience. Yeah, I, it's 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 impacted my life in such a wonderful way. It is it is the best Perfect. way to do it. Go in there, take a look at what's on the shelves, and just go to what appeals. 
you know? And sometimes, yeah, sometimes I'll be like, hey, you know, like I'll even ask. I'll ask the, you know, the person behind the counter if they can recommend something to me. It doesn't always work out, but sometimes it does. Uh-huh. And it's great when it does. Yeah. That's the best way. It's, it's, it's great to have something like that available. I think like, so if, yeah, um, mm-hmm. it's not something that's available to everyone around the world, but it's, you know, when you do find somewhere and someone, especially when you start talking to someone and they get really hyped about it, you're going like, okay, okay, you're loving this. So mm-hmm. I'm taking that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, yeah. there's been great stuff. I discovered Jonathan Hickman that way with the, you know, the, the, the shop, the, sh- the uh, dude behind the counter recommended Nightly News to me like over a decade ago. And oh, like, God, boom, yeah. Jonathan Hickman's first book. Uh huh. You know, the, recently the dude behind the counter said Chip Zdarsky's Batman's great. I was looking for a new title to read. I've never read Batman monthly. I've always read it after the fact collected. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I want to read Batman. Like, you know, is, is this, you know, and he's like, oh, Zdarsky's run is just getting started. You should check it out. It's, and I'm really enjoying it. Brilliant. Well, he's got, he writes a good Bruce. Does he? Oh, intriguing. Yeah. And he also writes like a good like Jason Todd. Like he's he's getting good. He's starting to really um, develop the characters like the Robin guys. Uh-huh. That's 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 kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm starting to enjoy that. Oh, that's nice. Okay, see that's so. Stop selling me on things. <laughs> I'm trying to save money. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> like yeah. hell, am I? There's so much. Hey, look. In ten years, you'll be like, oh, wait a second, a stereo's polyp. I'm going to pick that up. I, I rem- I've been trying to read that for years. In 10 years, I'm going to be doing it after this conversation. I think. There you go. It's worth, it's really good. I'm definitely going to Especially like, up. especially as like, I don't know how like much it would hit as like a teenager or like a 20 year old, but like where we are in our lives because the character is a little older than us. Um, but the notes still will resonate. Awesome. I've got to give it a go. I've got to give it a go. Masicelli's just, or I don't care what style he draws in. The man's a genius. So, Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, then you'll love this. I want that on my shelf. Look, Adam, thank you so much for coming on. Um, Dave, this has pleasure. been so much fun to chat to you about comics because, I mean, we've done it before, but it feels a little different where you're getting a chance to share your your personal choices. So I hope that was that was fun for you. Um, it's always cool. It's always cool talking to, talking comics. Oh, damn right. Well, look, um, don't forget, if you um, take a look at Adam's Running Out of Space podcast on YouTube um there's a ton of different collects on there and, and it, the thing is you, you also you'll start watching stuff and 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 think like how is this going to be of interest to me and it is always just interesting because it's immediately relatable if you're a collector the vibe is often very it's just very relatable um like i love the pyrex dishes episode that was such a good episode wasn't that cool yeah i loved it and i was thinking like what... i've got to watch this just out of curiosity um, yeah but i love that episode such a good such a good guest um I thanks so much name now but yeah it's it's well worth a watch please do um give it a look her name's chloe vanessa and it's chloe smug vanessa. pig smug pig vintage on instagram that's right that's right well done thank you um but yes she's great she is great um i'd have to i'd just happily go back and and watch that again now <laughs> but um yeah thanks again so much adam for coming on oh, my um, pleasure, Dave. if you ever want to do it again let us know yeah, come on, running out of space soon. Oh, I will. I will, if you have me. Yeah, for sure. And um, keep it going. thanks, everyone, for, for watching, stroke listening. And um, we'll do another Collector's Item special soon. Thanks a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs>